makes me very happy to invite Martin Polag on stage from the company called Game Therapy, uh, who's actually coming from Slovakia and is working on a app game uh, tool for virtual reality uh, that should be able to help people with claustrophobia in the future, maybe also some other uh, phobias as well. So Martin, thank you very much for coming and the uh, stage is yours. Thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon. Welcome to my today's presentation with the title Games Therapy and Beyond Gamified Virtual Reality Exposure Therapy. Uh, my name is Martin Polak. Um, I am a clinical psychologist and a psychotherapist, cognitive behavioral therapist in training. I also uh, do research on novel cognitive behavioral therapy interventions such as virtual reality exposure therapy and internet-based cognitive behavioral therapy in treating various anxiety disorders at the University of Graz in Austria. Um, together with my colleagues, we founded Game Therapy, which is a company based in Nitra, Slovakia, where we develop uh, gamified and automated um, virtual reality exposure therapy applications designed for specific phobias. Um, and my today's talk will be, as Marsh already mentioned, well, not only about uh, the gaming itself, but rather about a unique fusion between the gaming world and psychology or, or psychotherapy, to be more specific. So. I'm going to give you a brief explanation of what it actually is, this virtual reality exposure therapy. How does this method work? Is it effective at all? And how can you make it a game? Now I got your attention, I guess, right? So, you know, let me start to talk about VR in general because Long before games, um, the virtual reality um, has been used in medicine, actually, to treat a broad scale of uh, physical health issues, and quite uh, successfully, actually. Um, you know, the virtual reality has been used for several decades in the treatment of chronic pain, you know, in physical therapy, in rehabilitation, in uh, the treatment of cardiovascular diseases, etc., I could I could go on. Uh, but moving forward into psychology or psychotherapy, since 1995, we know a method called virtual reality exposure therapy, and this is a highly effective treatment designed for specific phobias, but not only for phobias, actually for other diseases, mental health issues as well. So I will talk to you briefly about virtual reality exposure therapy, but before I do that, I find it important uh, for you to know that it applies the same principles or rules as the traditional cognitive behavioral therapy. So is there anybody in the audience who has already heard about this psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. Can you raise your hands? Cognitive behavioral therapy, okay, I see some of you. Right, you know, there are many psychotherapies and cognitive behavioral therapy is just one of them, but we can definitely say that this is the psychotherapy that has the largest evidence base meaning that we have the most scientific research which tells us why, how, and where this psychotherapy is effective. And actually this one is the most effective in the treatment of anxiety disorders. And specific phobias are part of anxiety disorders. So let me explain you briefly how the cognitive behavioral therapy works. The psychotherapy assumes that you know, the way how we think and the way how we behave affects 
deeply how we feel. And if we manage to, you know, change our thinking in a slightly more rational, productive way, and to change our behavior in a slightly more constructive way, our feelings, our emotions will change for the better. And, uh, you know, I guess we all can agree upon that. We all want to feel good in life, right? So the most important difference between this traditional, highly effective psychotherapy, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, and this novel, its novel form, virtual reality exposure therapy, is that you can do exposure in virtual reality. I guess you have heard of this traditional folk wisdom when it comes to conquering your fears. It's, it goes somewhat along the lines like, when you want to get over your fears, you should confront them, you should face them, you know? It's a traditional folk wisdom, but supported with like hundreds of scientific uh, studies. But it is way easier said than done, especially if you suffer from a phobia or anxiety disorder, you know? So, still, this method is highly effective and it allows for a safe and effective confrontation of feared stimuli, whether it is in whether it is an object or a situation, you can do the exposure safely, in a, in a safe way. And um, this has many advantages, actually, because you can, uh, in the virtual reality, you can adjust or modify or manipulate the virtual scenarios basically in any way that you can think of, you know? you can adjust it to the actual state or treatment progress of the client. You can, you can repeat the exposure as often as needed, which is often uh, really difficult in the real life. You know, let's say people who, who have out of proportion fear of flying, which we know as aviophobia. It's really difficult to do exposure to expose yourself to flying unless you don't own a private jet, you know. But in the virtual reality, you can, you can do the exposure as often as needed, right? And also, it's way more attractive for the, for the clients. If given a choice, especially young people or people with um, specific phobias, prefer, prefer um, the exposure in virtual reali reality over the exposure in the real life. So this is quite something. So how does this method work? Basically, it doesn't matter which kind of phobia or anxiety disorder we are treating. There are three main steps that uh, need to be met or done I call them three pillars of the virtual reality uh, exposure therapy. And the first one is that you try, together with your client, understand how their fear arises and how the fear is maintained. Because it's really important how the fear uh, stays at, uh, at a high level. You know, you have to break it. Then the second pillar of the virtual reality exposure therapy is to teach the client to control the fear. And this goes usually very well using some cognitive and also some behavioral techniques. Basically, we teach the client to think more rationally and to behave more productively when exposed to a stressful event, right? And also there are various really effective re relaxation techniques that help you or help a client to reduce the stress level significantly, right? And the third pillar is the confrontation, the exposure itself. Um, and it's really interesting because, you know, in the virtual reality, you can basically 
design every scenario you can think of which is connected to a particular object or to a particular situation, you know, because we are, we are talking about specific phobias here, where the fear is connected to a concrete specific object or concrete specific uh, situation, and the fear is, has gotten out of proportion. So, what is science telling us about the efficacy of, of this method? When it comes down to, to the fear of hate, we, uh, some meta-analysis actually, and meta -analysis, a meta-analysis is a study that synthesizes results from various individual trials. So uh, you don't have a sample of 100 people, but you have a much larger sample in a, in a meta-analysis, like 1,000 people, and you can generalize the results from a meta-analysis to a broader to a general population. So that's why meta-analyses meta are really important. So the findings from the latest meta-analysis show us that with a fear of hate, we have a large effect sizes for the virtual reality exposure therapy. The same goes for social phobia or social anxiety disorder. And actually this is, this is my, uh, my top, topic of research, of interest, because uh, together with, uh, with my colleagues from Austria and, and Sweden, uh, we just recently published a pro protocol for a meta-analysis where we look in a really great detail into, into the efficacy of uh, virtual reality exposure therapy compared directly to the traditional exposure therapy, to the cognitive behavioral therapy. And the findings uh, are quite promising. You know, we, uh, we, were, uh, we were not able to find any significant difference between those two treatments. So, it's quite amazing for me, you know. It doesn't matter whether you do the exposure in the virtual reality or in the real life. That's, that's something, right? So with a fear of animals and fear of flying, the effect sizes are basically highly moderate to large, which is still really good. How can you make it a game, right? So, as I mentioned earlier, um, Virtual reality exposure therapy uh, requires for an exposure. An exposure itself, this is not something what you would like to do. Exposure to a feared object or a feared situation is actually something quite unpleasant. You better be highly motivated if you want to expose yourself to something that causes anxiety within you, right? So. When you add some game elements into the exposure, the confrontation with feared stimuli becomes way more attractive for, for the client, for the patient, which is really interesting. You know. Is there anybody in the audience who does not know what this picture is about? Raise your hands. Right, right, so I can tell you had a decent childhood or a dullest sense for that matter. It's a classic mobile game called Snake, which found a huge audience with, uh, with the Nokia users in, let's say, 2000s. I myself, I can think of how, how you know, amazed I was, uh, how frustrated I was when I crashed into my own tail. You know, it caused me a lot of nerves. But it was fun, you know. And um, when I think of games, I really think that they have always played a really huge, huge part in our civilization. I mean, you can track it across the cultures. Games uh, were here always with us uh, since, since the beginnings. I mean, a game is basically a very powerful medium how you can play out your imagination how you can relive past experiences. Um, it's really important in, in social interaction as well, you know. And from the philosophical point of view, I think that games have this kind of internal, intrinsic, motivational aspect in them. You know, we play games to win. We play games because they are fun. We play games because they have a meaning in them, right? We play games in order to finish them. Yeah? 
And this is definitely the case with um, virtual reality games. I mean, currently, approximately 171 million users are playing virtual reality games worldwide. It's a huge number, right? Okay, so how effective is this gamified virtual reality exposure therapy? You know, the findings from latest clinical research, and I'm talking about last three to five years, are showing us that with gamified virtual reality exposure therapy, you only need like six 30 minutes game sessions played twice or three times over two weeks to treat fear of hate. Or you need one exposure up to three hours to treat arachnophobia, which is out of proportion fear of uh, spiders. Or you need total exposure time up to maximum four hours to treat, again, fear of hate. So this is a lot less than, let's say, 10 hours did you need with, uh, with the traditional virtual reality exposure therapy. So we see that when, when we add game elements into this therapy, it not only becomes shorter, way shorter, it becomes more effective, more attractive, it reduces the dropout, and you know, the people who actually suffer from mental health diseases or issues, they, they prefer this, this method over, over the traditional exposure therapy, face-to-face -face therapy. So at Game Therapy, we develop gamified and automated virtual reality exposure therapy games or applications for specific phobias. And, you know, we talked about it. In the general population, the number of individuals with specific phobias is actually quite large. It spans over 10% in women and 5% in men. And we know from scientific research that approximately 90% of those affected remain untreated, mostly due to long waiting lists or unavailable evidence-based treatments. And you know you have this high treatment cost uh, when you want to commence a therapy, when you want to start a therapy. It costs you something, right? And you know, recently there has been a considerable demand for content focused on VR products, apps or games. The VR headset segment experienced a 300% increase in users in 2021. And the MetaQuest 2 platform acquired 75% of the market share in 2021. Way to go, Meta. So in the general population, the prevalence of claustrophobia is about 12%. That means that globally, about 1 billion people suffer from claustrophobia at least once in their lifetime. This number is actually really high. There are many, many, many. So our first product is a gamified virtual reality exposure therapy application designed for individuals suffering from claustrophobia. It is called Claustroph. And this is a therapeutic game with a focus on guiding the player throughout the virtual exposure to face their fears of you know, tiny and closed spaces from which escape could be difficult or even not possible as the people who suffer from claustrophobia oftentimes think. And the game follows the principles of gradual exposure where the player is challenged to expose themselves to gradually more intense stimuli, which are represented by continuously more enclosed spaces. And we know that adjusted to the claustrophobic population, we expect that around 20.5 million of VR users suffer from claustrophobia, actually, you know? And our game teaches the player various therapeutic techniques, which then can be transferred and used not only in the virtual reality, but also in the real life, where diverse fears are experienced. Not only a fear from enclosed or tiny spaces, because specific phobias, uh, they have a high comorbidity, meaning 
when you have a phobia, usually you have like two others or three others. So just to give you a brief glimpse into the game, I hope you can see something. The claustrophe is set in a historical castle, which used to be a psychiatric facility. The castle is actually real, located in Western Slovakia. We scanned it and digitalized it ourselves. You have a large park around the castle where you can get accustomed to the VR if you are new to it. Um, there is a labyrinth with some nice details in it. Entering the castle, you will find a large room where you have to solve some logical tasks in order to move forward uh, in the game. There are also smaller rooms where, again, you have to, well, not only solve some logical tasks, but also, and this is the main goal, or one of the main goals of our therapeutic game, you have to relax yourself, you know? So in a way, our game is really different to horror games or, you know, shooting games, fighting games, where the adrenaline is pouring out of your ears. Our main goal is teach the client, the user, the player to relax. Because in a relaxed state, a very important part of your brain activates. It's called neocortex. And when you use neocortex, when the neocortex activates, you are able to think more logically, more, more clearly, more productively. And this is really important, you know, for the player to be able to think more clearly during a stressful event. After all, we all want to do that, right? We all want to stay calm in a stressful event. So, that's basically it from my side. I hope you enjoyed it. And for those of you who are interested and want to see more, you will find us at the table. You can see more with your own eyes and come, come to us, talk to us, meet us. Uh, by the way, we are also looking for a strategic partner for possible future collaboration. So, thanks again for your attention. Enjoy the rest of the game days. See you around. Thank you. All right. So, as... Uh, well, one, two, three. So, as Martin said, don't hesitate to get in touch with him, uh, maybe test their game, give them some feedback. They definitely need it to improve it and to make it even more effective. Uh, if you have any questions, please use Slido uh, with this code. Uh, we just, uh, just disappeared from the screen. Uh, <laughs> to ask questions, uh, if you don't want to use your phone, just raise your hand and I will get to you if I see you. Yeah, over here. Um, hi, um, my question is how real the experience gets with these uh, virtual reality like games you are doing and how real it has to be to, for it to be effective? Right, so to answer the first part of your question, it gets uh, as real as it is pro uh, designed and is it, and is it coded. Uh, we tried our best and you know we invite you to see it for yourself how realistic it is we believe it is highly realistic for example uh, you know we have some competition but um, they use cardboard vr exposure so you can imagine how realistic is it when you when you're doing exposure with kind of uh, you know paper vr so our VR game is designed for uh, Oculus Quest 2. And to answer the second part of your question, we want to test it on a sample of patients or clients, individuals suffering from claustrophobia. We are cur currently working on it. So we don't have the results yet, but we definitely want to do a you know, clinical trial out of it so we have a scientific background of the, of the results of, it, of its e efficacy. All right, we have a question on Slido. Uh, why the dark, creepy theme in a claustrophobic game? Well, 
That's a good question. Isn't it like you're doubling down on an already suffering person? You, you could see it uh, that way, but you could also see it as a challenge for somebody who has out of proportion fear of enclosed tiny places. And you know, the, the better they uh, relax, the, the more effective the, the game. So, so this, this is the main goal of our game, to teach the client to relax. No matter what kind of uh, environment, it's, it's their task to relax and to think more rationally, to think more productively about the environment, about what they're experiencing. So it will be a challenge, but if they manage to relax in such, a, such an environment, they will get really successful in the real life as well. So the more stressful it is, the uh, more durable the healing effect of the game will be? You can say it that way, yeah. Right. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, hello, thank you for the presentation. It was pretty interesting. I, I, was, I wanted to ask uh, if you can say or maybe you were, you were actually showing something like that. I haven't been here, so I apologize if I haven't seen it. But what's the best existing reference of the game, which is healing or using a therapy on the market, which actually works? Is there any game like this, actually? Well, there are some that try to fit into this kind of new genre. It's actually our aim to to contribute to a new genre within the uh, within the gaming industry, game within the games itself, uh, it should be called like therapeutic game, something like that. You know, where the effect of the game is is purely therapeutic. Um, the other games, I don't know if you know about Richie's Plank experience from 2016, when where you are supposed to go up the skyscraper and you know look actually walk over you know a plank <laughs> it's kind of uh it's pretty distressing even for people who don't suffer from fear of hate but this this is not a therapeutic game it can be used in a therapeutic way um but per se it is not a therapeutic game um there is there are other um companies trying to develop um, similar therapeutic games, but as, I'm, as I have mentioned already, um, they are either for cardboard VR, which is not that realistic, you know, the, the immersion is not that, not that intense, or uh, it's for older types of headsets. So with our game, we are kind of on a forefront of this new genre we aspire to uh, co-create. Another question from uh, Slido. Do you also see potential in using augmented reality alongside virtual reality for this type of therapy? Uh, augmented reality uh, right. meaning that you actually can project things yeah. via headset yeah. into real space, not only into a virtual one. Okay. Well, there is a debate ongoing about using AR in a, in a treatment, but so far um, virtual reality um, shows the best results. So I think virtual reality is the future of treatment itself, not the AR. We will use AR for other things. If there are, oh, there is a question, yeah. Um, thank you for the presentation. I wanted to ask you, because you mentioned immersion while uh, going on with this whole therapy, and while using the VR, you know, has it itself, are you using any props that can help immersion, like... Am I using um, what? Some props, like uh, there was this building that you could walk over a plank, mm -hmm. so you could see videos on the internet that people were actually having some playing on, right. you know, on the ground, right. and that could really help imagine. Are you using any kind of stuff like, like that? Not in this game, not in Klaustroff, but in my therapeutic praxis, I do. Mm -hmm. Because, as you have said, this uh, amplifies the, the immersion. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the more senses you, um, you connect, the better the, Im the, the immersion, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, when you test your claustroph game on claustrophobic people, what's the feedback? What they say, is it really helping them? We are about to do that. Yeah, we are planning it. We are about to execute that in our following months. So we don't have the results yet, but we definitely want to see the efficacy. You know, we want to test it and then publish. And if you have claustrophobia, you can maybe be one of the testers, like the first, one of the first testers over here. <laughs> uh, everybody is welcome. Hello, I just wanted to ask, maybe it was mentioned also in the presentation, I'm sorry if I will be repeating myself, but why did you choose claustrophobia as the fear that you want to address? And then maybe something different, for example, the arachnophobia that you were mentioning. Is it because of the many people that are suffering from the fear or because it is like, it was the, the thing that you wanted to base the game on. Thanks. Thank you. Well, this was a, a result of an intern discussion. We have talked about it a lot within our team. And um, as you may have seen, there are already are some some gamified virtual reality exposure therapy apps or games for uh, you know uh, fear of uh, hate uh, and um, uh, what was the what was the next one? Well, it was a decision um, part, um, partly partially partially because of the of the prevalence is highly prevalent in a in a general population, but. You know, we aim for uh, for more. Actually, you know, the the plan is to develop as many games as possible. In the future, we'll show how many those will be. Uh, hello, I would like to ask uh, how are you planning to evaluate this type of uh, therapy and find out the efficacy? Do you have, for example, some? Hard rate monitors during the experience or something like that, plans? Using the claustrophobia scale, which is a standardized, um, you know, interview assessment scale. Usually, when you want to measure the efficacy of um, any treatment, you will measure it. You will measure the level of symptoms. Um, before the treatment, before the intervention, then you can do it during the intervention as well, and then after the intervention. And you can also do follow-up, I mean, like two months after, after the end of the intervention, one year, two years, you know, so using uh, standardized assessment scales. Okay. So if there are, any other, if, if there are not any other questions, uh, thank you, Martin, very much. Uh, once again, uh, guys are over there in the showcase area with their headset. You can try the application or the game uh, yourself and maybe give them some more feedback. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Have a nice time. Bye.